Now the first tick is in the green, so 40 points higher on the Nifty. The mid-cap side of things, which too are not looking so good. Almost slow burn. Uh, yeah, the, the swings are coming, I mean, especially on the Nifty and the big indices. Uh, but generally speaking, not very much. It's been lethargic price action, no doubt. The market just is drifting sideways uh, to uh, close uh, flattish. 16,960 is where we are uh, going to close around. Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18. You're watching Markets Today, the show where we track about six hours of the day's trading action in five headlines. I'm Sonal Bhutra. Here are the headlines for the day. The last street ends a range-bound session with marginal losses. Bank stocks rebound, but auto stocks drag. The sell-off in Adani stocks resumed. The group has lost 80,000 crore rupees in market cap over the last three sessions. A report by the Ken shows Adani Group has not made any filings on the re release of pledged shares despite claims to the contrary. IRDAI announces new regulations that removal of segmental limits on commissions for life, general and health insurers. Under the new norms, the total commission paid by all insurers will have to be under the expense of management limits. PB Fintech hits a nine-month high on the news. Aditya Birla Capital exits the insurance broking business by selling its controlling stake in Aditya Birla insurance brokers. Meanwhile, Paytm's payments wallets become interoperable with other wallets after the National Payments Corporation of India's latest guidelines. Analysts say the new norms will open avenues for additional revenue for the fintech company. Supply concerns caused by disruption from Turkey and proposed output cuts by Russia spark a crude rally. Stronger Chinese demand and improved sentiment in the U.S. banking sector also provides impetus for the rise. And here's the lineup of what we have in store for you. It's a packed show today. In market opinion, we have Sanjeev Prasad of Kotak Institutional Equities and Mark Matthews of Bank Jewelers Bear & Co. All this and more, but before that, we head straight to the day's market action today. And the last street traded in range ahead of an expiry day tomorrow. Nifty and Sensex ended the day mildly lower. However, Nifty managed to hold on to 16,900. BSE firms erased a market capitalization of one and a half lakh crore rupees today. Adani Group stocks and auto stocks led the fall, while financials lent some support. Prashant Nair is here, as always, with the details. Prashant. Well, absolutely a flat close and uh, pretty much a repeat in, in some ways like yesterday, except the fact that yesterday, that is Monday, we had some semblance of a rally mid-afternoon which fizzled out towards closer a sharp way. Today, we did not have that. Uh, it was very slow price action through the course of the day and we kind of closed gently in the red by about 20, 25 points. Banks, though, did well. Bank Nifty was up about 0.4%. Thank you uh, to one or two specific names, which I will get to in just a bit from now. But between the bank Nifty and the Bank Nifty, some slight divergence. We've seen that on occasion in the past as well, and it hasn't really led us uh, to kind of, uh, you know, those trends continuing in any sustainable way. Uh, on uh, the stocks front, the Adani Group stocks, and I've said that this is an important constituent for retail slash H&I sentiment, uh, they all took a knock, sharp knocks. Ports, Enterprises, Total Gas, Adani Green, Adani Wilmar, they were all in the red. Outside of this pack on the Nifty, names like Tech Mahindra, Tata Motors, Hero, ONGC and Bharti were losers. Uh, Indescent Bank was a standout gainer. There was a brokerage report to which it reacted. UPL and Power Grid were the other two notable gainers on the index. In the broader market, I mean, advances outnumbered declines for exactly about 15 minutes after 9.15 when we opened this morning. The lines crisscrossed and we ended deeply negative. Almost threes to one in favor of declines today. Losses coming in and in names like Kalyan Jewelers, Divijaya Diagnostic, Raymond Shipping Corporation, Minda Corp. They were gainers as well and only a few volume-led gainers for you. PNC Infra, Spark, Imami, Bank of India, Torrent Power, PNB Housing, the Pipe Maker, ISMT and uh, a few others as well. Uh, you know, globally, things are looking a little better as we start this new week. The pace of activity has slowed down. At least it feels a little lethargic, especially given... Uh, you know, how manic and frenetic the pace of market activity was all of last two weeks. Uh, the fear, though, at the margin is that the Nifty perhaps is slowly drifting lower and eventually we'll see a retest at that 16,800, 16,850 levels. The question is, if it comes to pass, will the market once again respect that for the third time and bounce off those levels in a meaningful way? Back to you. Prashant, thank you so much for joining us with that analysis. In market opinion now, Sanjeev Prasad of Kotak Institutional Equity says that there is a risk of further downgrade in earnings. Meanwhile, Sunil Tirumalai of UBS says India is the weakest market year till date among other emerging markets. Take a look. We still have uh, risk of earnings uh, 
downgrades going forward, particularly in the discretionary space, uh, given the fact that uh, the slowdown is for real. And from whatever we are picking up, it looks like it could extend for another two to uh, four quarters. So, uh, yes, you have some downward risk also to earnings. And then you have also sorts of, you know, potential negative news in India in terms of, you know, possibly uh, not so great uh, monsoon this time around. The only sector where valuations are very attractive, I would say, is the financial sector. And but there the challenge still remains. You have a lot of global uncertainty. So until that clears, you know, people will still continue to, you know, have a negative view on Indian banks. So having said that, Indian banks have got nothing to do with whatever problems we are seeing in the US. You know, they fundamentally are in very, very strong shape. They don't have the, you know, the asset liability issues which many of the regional US banks are facing, you know. But, but till that overhang, you know, goes away, I suspect, you know, Indian banks will also struggle despite, you know, somewhat uh, deep value for many of the banks. I mean, most of the PUC banks are now down to, again, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 times, you know, when you uh, forward twice to go. India has underperformed. So YTD, it's, it's actually one of the uh, weakest equities markets in emerging markets universe. I think, firstly, the earnings growth trajectory in India is normal. It's nothing super exciting. It's numbers from India are not super exciting compared to its own history, whereas for other markets, they are a lot more exciting and they are cheaper compared to their own history and they are still expensive compared to our own history. Um, having said that, we are also still continuing to see earnings cuts, uh, you know, in, in, in India. Uh, I mean, if you actually look at it uh, for the uh, for, for, for 2020, FI24, I mean, I ignore FI23, we have been in the, in the year right now, I mean, you always see big cuts in the year in which you are, you are, you are currently in. Even FI24, we are seeing big cuts, we are getting nearly 35 of the 15 FT stocks are seeing earnings cuts over the last three months. Okay, moving on to opinion from global market experts now. Meanwhile, Mark Matthews of Julius Bear says that a weak dollar will boost Asian markets. Uh, listen in to what he had to make of this one. I think uh, the dollar uh, will uh, continue to um, s slowly decline, barring a, an enormous banking crisis. And then, you know, I think it would probably be going up as a risk off kind of thing. But that's not our base case. And uh, and of course, when the dollar falls, that's a, a, a great um, uh, a tailwind for uh, the Asian markets, including India. I'm not at all disconcerted by India's underperformance so far this year, despite the fact everybody seems to be talking about it. You have to remember last year in relative terms, it did uh, well compared to most other markets in the world. And, and the year before it did very well. So um, it won't always be outperforming. And this could be a year where it underperforms some other markets, but um, I, I haven't changed my opinion at all. Uh, we like banks, and um, I think the Indian market is fine. Okay, Indian market is fine. That's the word coming in from Mark Matthews. Moving on to the second headline now. The Adani Group saw its biggest single-day market cap erosion in over a month. This on renewed concerns over repayment of debt. The 10 group stocks were down anywhere in the range of 3 to 7%. The group as a whole has erased nearly 50,000 crore rupees in market capitalization in today's session. According to a report by the Ken, the Adani Group has not filed any update on the recent release of pledged shares. Vivek Ayana joins in with more details on this one. Uh, Vivek, take us to the highlights of that report. Well, all of the Adani Group stocks were in focus today and were under significant pressure in today's trading session. Uh, we did get access to a report by the Ken that actually indicated that there may have been a few discrepancies in terms of what the company has reported in terms of reduction of pledged shares and what was actually done by the lenders. Now, the first thing what the Ken is reporting is that no regulatory filings actually indicate reduction in pledged shares post the company's press release. In fact, what they're saying is that the disclosures should have been made to the stock exchanges by the lenders within two working days and by the promoters within seven working days. And these lack of disclosures makes the Ken believe that the debt has not been fully repaid as yet. Now, there have been three subsequent press releases by the Adani Group from Feb 6 to March 12th. And, you know, the Ken has gone ahead and analyzed each of them. On Feb 6, you know, the Adani Group did say that the promoters are looking to prepay over $1,100 million worth of, you know, uh, debt share back financing. And this maturity was on September 2024. According to them, the move was going to lead to a release of shares.
in Adani Ports, Adani Green, as well as Adani Transmission. However, the Ken says that banks have only released the pledge shares as far as Adani Ports is concerned. Now, coming to March 7th, you know, the group said that they have prepaid almost $902 million of share back financing. And according to them, the move was going to lead to release of shares in Adani Ports, Adani Enterprises, Adani Green, as well as Adani Transmission. However, the Ken says that none of the pledge shares pertaining to this payment have been released by the banks as yet. Lastly, coming to March 12th, you know, Adani Group says that they have completed full prepayment of margin link share back financing, aggregating to $2.15 billion. However, the Ken says that none of the promoters pledge shares barring Adani ports have been released. We reached out to the Adani Group as well as to the stock exchanges and we are still awaiting a reply from them. Vivek, thank you so much for joining us with those important details. So Adani Group continues to be in focus. Moving on to the third headline today, IRDAI or the insurance regulator has announced new regulations that removal of segmental limits and commissions for life, general and health insurers. Under the new norms, the total commission paid by all insurers will have to be under the expense of management limits. PB Fintech hit a nine-month high on the news. Yash Jen is here with all those details. Yash? Well, important uh, move and a big positive for all insurance companies in life, general as well as standalone health insurance sector and particularly important for web aggregators like Policy Bazaar. The government along with the insurance regulatory body IRDAI has cleared commission regulations uh, for insurance companies. Now in particular under these commission regulations, the insurance regulatory body has uh, decided to remove the segmental limits on the commissions paid by insurance companies for the sale and distribution of their policies. Now to understand this better, uh, there are two things. One is expenses of management which is a sum total of commission and other operating expenses other than commission and the second one is of course commission. Uh, what the insurance regulator has said is that we'll remove the segmental limits like the commission limits in individual motor health accident segment and we'll put a headline limit in terms of expenses of management. Uh, the number is not clear as to what would be the expenses of management limit but the regulators made it clear that the commission limit has to remain under the expenses of management limit. Now it's up to the insurance company to decide how much they want to spend towards commission and how much they want to keep towards other operating expenses other than commission. Uh, this is positive for them because they'll be able to plan their commission structures better, focus on individual segments and spend more uh, given some individual segments look more attractive to you. For uh, web aggregators like Policy Bazaar, it will be positive because they will eventually get higher commissions when the spending is higher in some segments. Now, of course, this is effective 1st April, but important clarity is still awaited in terms of what will be the absolute number of limit uh, as far as expenses of management limit is concerned. Okay. All right. And um, Yash, thank you so much for joining us with all those details. Meanwhile, tax revisions in various investment tools like debt and equity have spurred the interest for alternatives. Rahul Jain of Novama Wealth and Nishant Agrawal of ASK Private Wealth say that funds are now flowing into insurance policies. Listen into what they have to say. People are uh, using this opportunity to increase the allocation on debt and go into debt mutual funds. Apart from that, I think the whole insurance uh, change which has also happened in the finance bill where the guaranteed plans earlier used to have no ticket size limit, now it is 5 lakh. The lot of money is going there as well because that provides you still tax-free returns and also you can lock in your future investments also on tax-free returns point of view. Tax benefit of insurance beyond 5 lakhs of premium will not be available from uh, policies taken from next year onwards. So these are little more longer term decisions. So investors who were on the fence probably looking at deciding on insurance in the next couple of months might be better off by deciding it now for large ticket sizes beyond 5 lakhs. Okay, that's some expert opinion coming in. With that, it's time for a break now. But stay tuned. We'll be back in a jiffy with the other headlines. Is bar Tata IPL? Geo Cinema. Pe. Kisi bhi screen. Pe, wo bhi free. Chal bhai ya. देश चाहते हैं सारा ये आम से दिखने वाले लोग आइए करते हैं देश चलाने वाले इन्हीं राइजिंग हीरोज का सम्मान न्यूज 18 राइजिंग इंडिया रियल हीरोज प्रेजेंटेड बाय पूना वाला फिल्म कॉर्प लिमिटेड एनेबलिंग ड्रीम्स वेलकम बैक यू स्टिल विद अस इन मार्केट टुडे लेट्स गो टू द रेस्ट ऑफ द हेडलाइंस दैट वी आर ट्रैकिंग फॉर यू to the fourth head, uh, to the fourth headline now, Aditya Birla Capital exits the insurance broking business by selling its controlling stake in Aditya Birla Insurance Brokers. Abhishek Kothari standing by with the details. 
Well, Aditya Billa Capital is looking to sell stake in Aditya Billa Insurance Brokers to Samara Capital for an enterprise value of rupees 455 crore. Now, AB Capital holds about 50% stake in the company, and the company says that you know they will receive further consideration post the completion of five years from the deal closing. We have Morgan Stanley who has written on this transaction. They have an equal weight rating on AB Capital with a target price of 163 per share. They say that the broking arm sale is being done at a 60% discount to their own current valuation that they have for the broking arm and the entire subsidiary is being sold for 455 crore which is a valuation of 5x September FI24 profits. So broking arm contributes about 2.4 per share in, uh, that is about 1.4% of the total to the target price of rupees 163 per share. Back to you. Uh, but Abhishek, stay with us. There's some news on Paytm as well. Users of Paytm wallets can now use their balance to make any UPI payments without using their bank accounts. This comes after the National Payments Corporation of India has announced new wallet interoperability guide, uh, guidelines. Uh, tell us more about this. Uh, well, uh, marginal uh, uptick, uh, you know, for uh, Paytm uh, payment wallets. Uh, so now the wallet customers can make payments on every UPI QR codes and online merchants. So if you have a Paytm, uh, you know, uh, bank account uh, with you, you can make payments on the uh, UPI or the uh, QR code of phone pay or any other, uh, you know, uh, QR code that's available. That's what analysts have given me a feedback. Uh, Paytm Payments Bank will also earn additional interchange revenue from merchants acquired by other payment uh, service providers, payment gateways, as well as payment aggregators. So just to put the cost in uh, perspective, a bank will earn, that is Paytm Payment Bank will earn 1.1% interchange revenue. Uh, this is the revenue that they get largely from uh, Paytm, that is 197 Communications Limited. Uh, 15 basis point for uh, charges uh, for adding more than 2,000 uh, rupees to UPI and uh, 15 basis point when any other wallet is used uh, you know, uh, to add uh, 2,000 in Paytm Payment Bank. So, just to alert our viewers, NPCI announced wallet interoperability uh, uh, guidelines on March 24, 2023. Morgan Stanley has written a note on Paytm. They uh, say uh, their recommendation is of an equal weight uh, with a target price of 6.95 per share. They say that for Paytm's uh, payments bank, the new guidelines could lead to additional revenues. The new guidelines could lead to some higher wallet loading charges as well. So, Paytm should benefit as interchange fees paid to Paytm banks actually moves lower. We don't know the context as to how much lower, but it's a marginal decline which should benefit Paytm. Back to you. Okay, uh, let's talk uh, about the banking space now. Indusin Bank was up 2% in trade after brokerage firm Bank of America said it sees 50% potential upside in the stock from current levels. Nimesh is here with the details of that report. Nimesh. You know, there is no big uh, uh, upgrade or a downgrade on the stock, but Bofa sees a 50% potential upside on Indusin Bank, and and it's a most and it's a you know preferred pick for them in the mid cap uh, financial space. Now, uh, Bofa says that uh, uh, you know Indusin is no longer a, a, a so-called potential turnaround story. In fact, hard part of the work is already done, and the results and the results will be quite visible and apparent as soon as the next quarter. In fact, uh, at the current levels, the bar of bar for execution is quite low. And that offers a uh, offers a huge uh, you know margin of safety. Now there are a couple of triggers which uh, you know Bofa is looking at as far as investment bank is concerned. The first being uh, you know the macro and rate cycle uh, is now finally aligned to banks' uh, business mix, so that's going to benefit in terms of earnings. Two, the liability plus the uh, asset quality buffer uh, has improved compared to the peers. And three, the core profitability is still uh, you know best in class despite the de-risking. So at current valuations of just 1.2 times uh, price to book, uh, the, you know, the, the, the stock is pricing in just 13% just growth, whereas even in stress case, uh, it, the bank is expected to grow at 15%. So there is tailwind for the stock, the valuations are compelling, and Bofa sees a 50% potential upside in Indusin Bank, and that's why it's the preferred pick uh, within the financials for Bofa Securities. Nimesh, thank you so much for joining us with the details of that report. Moving on to the fifth headline now. Crude oil rallied overnight following a boost in sentiment after the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation announced the rescue of SVB Financial. Supply concerns also forced prices higher after disruption from Turkey and proposed output cuts by Russia. Stronger Chinese demand and a weaker dollar has only strengthened the rally overnight. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Market Today. Thank you so much for watching. Powered.